We have three different pots, three new pots for three different orchids, but they are OG in my collection. We have three very similar scenarios because all the pots are broken and the orchids deserve to shine in nice pots. However, we have one media change, one up pot, and well, one root ball cleanup, and two out of the three orchids have never been repotted since they arrived in my collection. Oops, but I shall explain. Okay, here we go. Getting ready, loosening the hands, doing the Rocky Balboa jiggle in the background, fist pumping. Da da da, da da da, da da da. I welcome you to a beautiful day in southern Spain. Thank you so much for being here. And what was that all about? Well, <laughs> I'm trying to stay focused. I'm going to pretend that this is one video for a single orchid <laughs> because I've got so much cruising in my head. My focus is at the moment something akin to squirrel. <laughs> so <laughs> if you are new to my channel, yes, this is how I roll sometimes on some videos. Needless to say, I take my hobby very, very seriously, but I thank you for still being here after that intro. Sometimes I add a little bit of humor. Sometimes we get a little bit serious. Sometimes we are more in lecture mode. Today is not the day. Today we're going to give some orchids a new fresh start in their life so that they stay in the collection and don't go fuchicato. A term I used to use a lot in my childhood and seeing as everything is a bit childish at the moment <laughs> I thought it was rather fitting. So by the way if you're new to my channel consider subscribing. You will not be disappointed by the variety of different takes. You never know what's coming up next in a video. <laughs> okay coming up right now and I made a mistake, this pot is not broken. Well, who knew? Anyway, she has to come out regardless. She is growing new roots and she is Brasavola accordato. And being a warm grower and my winters get a little bit onto the chiller side, her roots, I like to sometimes call them tootsies, her tootsies get a little bit cold in lecker and self-watering and Brasavolas aren't exactly generous with their root growth, so we need to make sure that she stays happy. She will be going into lava rock. Yes, in a self-watering setup, it works because the pot will stay the same size. Now, I did a video about lava rock and semi-hydroponics. If you're interested in that, I will link it in the description. So I'm gonna just make sure that one root that is growing, <laughs> we tilt the lecker into the opposite direction. And, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. <clears throat> Not because of that, but because of this. Yes. Now, you may say, why are you changing the setup if the roots are growing nicely into the pot? Well, I just mentioned, I get very cold nights, days, nights, continuously for at least four months of the year. And the LECA with the evaporative cooling, mm -mm -mm, that is not a solution long term. You can see that she lost a lot of needles. This was all this season as we were coming into spring and the most recent one before she grew a new growth as well. That's no bueno. And I would like to stop that from happening. So I'm just going to release the leca from here, all the dead roots. And you know what I'm not going to do is cut any of the dead roots off because yes, while they're a great source of humidity also in the pot, for eventualities, in future repots, they're going to help hopefully buffer against the lava rock, which is extremely coarse, has lots of crevices. You know, the roots, they get shredded on a repot when you pot up in lava rock, and I would like to avoid that. So I use old roots to help me out because sometimes new roots will grow along the old roots because that's where moisture is. And then when we do repot maybe in three years, the carnage won't be so detrimental. So this one's going according to plan, which is wonderful because we have two more to go, which are hopefully also gonna be drama free, but I shall talk you through those as and when we get there. I know, imagine not cutting off dead roots. 
it's not a novel thing on my channel. When you're working with inorganic media, you can get away with quite a few things that would normally not be a good idea if you're growing in organic media. So if that is something that you haven't actually considered before, consider it because it's absolutely fine. You see, another thing is, as mentioned, brassavolas don't grow many roots. So there's not really that much decay in the pot, even with the new media. But what we do need, because lava rock is abrasive, is water because I use that as a buffer when I put the orchid in and then put lava rock around her. So we're just going to add that, which is something that is probably not very good when you do grow in organic media because the bark would just float everywhere. Meanwhile, when I was growing in organic media back in the day, I used to wet my bark for the repot so the new media wouldn't be so dry against the new roots. Anything, anything that helps to avoid desiccation of the root tips. So as the roots are pointing down, this is good. This helps me a lot. I'm not in any fear of bashing those root tips with the lava rock. Still got to be careful though. Just because a plan is working, I don't want to make a mistake. Because that root tip will stop growing the moment it has any kind of interference with it. So let's take note. We've got three active roots on the previous growth. And then hopefully the new growth will also start to get some roots before the warm temperatures end. Now you're probably wondering why isn't she cutting the dead pseudobulbs off? I can always do that later if I want to because there's no roots attached. I'm not anchoring them to the pot. But if I need any structures to be able to secure then wire the orchid to keep her stable, then I'm gonna use the old and dead pseudobulbs. So I'm keeping them as an option. The orchid may appear to be very low in the pot and that is intentional. I would like to avoid any circling around the rim there. And on top of that, I don't really have that much humidity in my environment and everything helps when it comes with Brassavola roots and humidity. So keeping them lower helps me with that as well. Another layer, another buffer. There we go. One down, two to go. By the way, would you please give this video a like? That would be awesome. I would appreciate it so, so much. Let the algorithm know that it's worthy of being recommended. <laughs> anything, anything that YouTube likes, for videos to actually make it into the algorithm, I would be ever so grateful if you could do that, including sharing it. If you feel that my intro isn't too embarrassing to expose other orchid aficionados to. <laughs> I'm just gonna add some plain RO water, seeing as there are not really any roots to work with. And I'm going to raise the water level high enough not to touch the surface, but to bring the humidity up high to continue encouraging the roots to grow down. My Dendrobium munificum, never been repotted. Every time she was growing new growth, I said, now's the time, now's the time. And that was two years ago. So I am not doing it a third year in a row, seeing as it is high noon and the pot is broken. So my plan here is just to squeeze her out of the pot very, very carefully and hopefully not do too much damage with the existing root system and just up pot her and then hopefully pretend like nothing ever happened and you know what after five years in this pot of course she's pretty pot bound but she's she's budging i am not even planning on trimming any dead roots if i see them again with inorganic media we can get away with that only for so long, but I don't know the behavior of these roots. I've only ever seen them grow out and they are gorgeous. They are an orange fuzzy looking root system. And I missed the mark. This is just, I'm not trying to wake you up, girl. No, I just want to get you from this pot into a bigger pot so that when you do wake up, <laughs> it's going to be okay. But what I do have to do, oh, we do have some active root tips there, but it's not anything to write home about. What we do have uh, is to get out this microfiber. Do I want to? Let's try. Let's at least try and just tickle the bottom. Not make any drama here. This is not your alarm clock, girl. And don't you go dumping roots on me. 
I was hoping not to have to touch this orchid until she bloomed, but as the pot broke, hmm. And the reason also I got away with it for so long is because look at how fine her roots are. And that's, there's still plenty of air in the pot. The pot wasn't rock hard. Even though I'm digging a little bit around here in the middle, I did get some give out of her when I squeezed the pot before soaking it. So that to me is the climate is absolutely fine. We have some black roots up here. They feel sturdy, but that doesn't mean they're okay. Oh, we've got nice roots here, but I don't want to mess around. Nope, I'm gonna stick with my plan A. I'm not gonna get carried away just because I'm seeing what I'm seeing, but I'm liking what I'm seeing a lot. Let's just try not to push our luck here, but see if we can remove some fern roots. Do some weeding. Yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing, this is good. Now I did say orange roots, but that is because they come, when I see them at the surface, oh, let's turn her around so you can see something. When I see the roots at the surface, they come out orange and fuzzy. And of course, without the light or anything, they just go white, as many roots do when you grow in not clear pots. So I can see my lecker ratio was a mixed bag. I'm going from a 15 centimeter pot to, let me remind myself, a 20 centimeter pot. Yeah, considering how she's growing one growth per year, that should do really nicely for the next five years. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> if she grows really well and surprises us, then we are, of course, going to intervene much, much sooner. But I'm going to need a layer of lecker at the bottom because she's not going in that deep. The lecker at the bottom now is exclusively large. She has a very clear direction of growth. She's coming back in on herself because of the way I'm trying to train her, make sure that she kind of stays in the pot. So I will put her up against the back end of the pot. And then we're just going to fill around with large lecker to begin with and top off with small. I'm very encouraged by the root growth. <laughs> Thank goodness. That's, that's our grace in case. So far, this video is going according to plan. I like it. <laughs> Must have been my day. Famous last words. Keep going. We've got one more to go. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I'm using the small lecker at the top because of the fine roots. I don't want them to have to search long to get down into the media. And now she is going to be filled up with bactrophil just to encourage that root growth. It's around 100 parts per million of bactrophil here at a pH of 6.5 because she's a big orchid because we have a layer between the root system, the base of the root system, and the actual pot, I'm raising my reservoir up a little bit higher so that they don't have to fight to find the moisture. Fantastic. Let's get number three. Kaolarthron by Cornutum, which was a gift from the orchid room back in 2020 when Brexit had not kicked in yet and we did orchid swaps. So this is a very precious orchid to me. Now, let me explain. She has never been repotted either because it took quite some time to get her established. I got her with these two back bulbs <laughs> that have done their job. Thank you for your service. And a little new growth starting. So everything was a little bit cumbersome, let's say. And I potted her up in a weird angle. You saw how the bulbs were leaning just so that the roots of the growth would grow straight into the media and we weren't going to be fussing around. I was not concerned about aesthetics with her at all. So here we are three years later, she has established herself. We have had her bloom twice for us. Beautiful little white blooms, delicate, a gorgeous fragrance, but a bit of a shocker right now. I'm getting these blemishes here on her like I have on my Panarica Brassavole. So we are gonna be fussing over her a little bit more, but she's gonna get a nice clean up and she is going into a nice clean pot because her new growth is growing roots. Great timing. So far I'm absolutely digging how this is going here and I'm hoping that the momentum continues. So it wasn't strategic for me to leave her last but maybe she's the one we're going to be fussing over a little bit more than the others. I have to be careful because the pseudobulbs aren't very sturdy. They look tough and rough at the top but 
They're not connected by a very strong rhizome, but we have had tremendous progress with her. Oh, and we've got some fantastic root growth coming as well. Excellent, excellent. If the orchid room ever sees this, I hope that she is pleased as well. So, thinking, thinking, thinking. Well, we can cut this back off, that dead part. We don't need that. It hinders the progress. We don't really need to do much more with the exception of getting the microfiber out as per. But I don't want to fuss with her too much. We've got the root growth. I could be a little bit more radical, but that was not the plan for her. And I'm trying to stick to my strategy here. Not because of the length of the video. Sometimes I'm a bit concerned about that, but not with this video. It's three orchids in one video. It's bound to be a little bit longer than normal, but I'm hoping that it is of interest regardless. So I'm just trying to tease out the microfiber. I'm not concerned about roots, as in dead roots. But I did have the microfiber up very, very high because she came with very few roots. If I remember correctly, maybe even none. And I needed that humidity to rise very quickly and get the root growth to grow into the pot. That's why this is so up deep and high in there. I'm really sorry if all of that was just out of focus. So that's that. But what I do need to do is get my garlic alcohol and we're gonna take care of the base here. You can see she's had very little grooming because my intention was only to get her established. Now that we've got her established, we can discuss aesthetics. <laughs> Ants and caularthrons are like mumicophilas. They work together, so it's not my intention to get rid of the ants. They make holes, they work together, whatever dies, any debris, anything like that, within the pseudobulb, in the hole, they all work together. Every, that's nutrition to the orchid. So you see that hole right there? And that is the access to the ants. Now, coincidentally, it also has the spotting. So I'm hoping they're not messing around in there, hurting my orchid instead of doing their job. Here's another little hole, same thing. So we're not going to be fussing around too much. Let's get her nice, shiny, new, deserving hot. Now I'm only using one microfiber this time around because she has established her root system and I'm contemplating a large and small Lekka mix for her. Clearly she enjoyed that ratio. And because this is pretty much like an up pot, yes, you would say, why don't you put her into a larger pot? I could do that, but I need to remind myself that after a single up pot, it is also time to consider a proper root ball cleanup repot and as she grows into this pot, it will be a reminder to me that she needs to get a bigger pot and then we can do this all again and give her a proper root ball cleanup when the time comes. I don't like the levels, so forgive me. Dear little orchid, don't hate me. Just because we're close to the end of the road doesn't mean we cut corners. Stick with the program. There we go. That's better. Give her some gentle encouragement. <laughs> Scooch! <laughs> we are the growers, my friend. And we'll keep on growing till the end. Dun, 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 dun. We are the growers. We are the growers. We won't lose our kids. No, we will just grow them till they bloom. And while we're at it, we're gonna do the Nadal fist pump of victory. <laughs> Don't they look marvelous? Oh, they look so much better. Ha, <sighs> I like it. 
no, don't worry, I'm not going to sing again. I just thought it was so fitting. Seeing as I put myself into the mood for this challenge of three orchids and staying focused, you know? So if you've made it to the rendition of We Are The Champions and my adaptation of the same, <laughs> we are the growers. <laughs> and if I sang that song to such a degree that YouTube is going to ding me for copyright, I can always say I changed the lyrics. It is transformative, so that copy copyright strike doesn't count. Anyway, <laughs> if you've made it this far, I want to thank you so, so much for being here. I hope that you enjoyed the video and well, just asking for a friend, would you please like, maybe share and subscribe? That would be awesome. I get to wish you a beautiful day. I get to add a condition to that, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs>